Let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Fund Management Office Hours, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be demoing a new dashboard that we released just on Tuesday. So it's brand new. Um, much awaited contract management dashboard. Um, it is live on BAH now. Um, so um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay, so on BAH, Budget and Finance, um, it's on the Projects and Awards um, tab. Uh, way down here, it's got this little new tab on it. Um, so it's the Contract Management Dashboard. This dashboard actually has four brand new reports on it um, for management of both um, award contracts and general contracts or non-sponsored contracts. Um, it, we tacked a couple of additional reports onto it that are semi-related aging reports, but those reports were already ex in existence. I'm not going to be demoing those. We just tacked the same reports on there. Um, I'm going to say up front that um, the data behind these reports was very complex, very difficult to work with, and we spent a good three months in data validation after the reports were built. Um, so there are some bells and whistles that did not make it onto these reports that we, uh, um, you know, we're going to be kicking off enhancements to these basically right away. Um, so if you run the reports or you see the demo and you're like, I really wanted to love this, but I can't because it's missing this. I really need this prompt or I really need this column on this report. Please submit enhancement requests. Um, I, I do, like I said, I want to be getting on those right away because I know that it's missing some things. And um, we just couldn't, given the level of data validation that it needed, we had to make sure that the data was solid um, before we added those extra things. And I did not want to delay the release of this dashboard any more than we already did. We pushed it back by a month um, because of some factors and just needing to really make sure that this data was accurate. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna divert here and just remind you how you do this. Um, so, in, under support, budget and finance, um, get help. If you would like to request enhancements to this, to any of these reports, to four reports, submit an enhancement request on this ticket right here. If you are running the report and you notice issues like the data doesn't match what's in Oracle, don't give up on the report, please. Um, it's hard for us to test for every single circumstance. Submit a ticket with this one um, and mark this um, as report a problem and then submit it to this BI and financial reporting queue, um, this report an issue or error with existing financial reports. We'll get that and we'll address them right away. Um, so again, enhancement request to the enhancement request ticket. And then if you see an issue, submit an issue ticket here. Um, Glenn, I'm gonna pass on your question. If we could spend the whole hour just talking about the the data intricacies um and i really want to get into the report um okay so let's launch it Okay, as on other Oracle dashboards, you get a list of reports on the front. These are the four new reports. So there's an award summary, uh, non-sponsored um, contract and project summary, 
Um, and then invoice and payment details and receipt details. So two summary reports and two detail reports. Let's take a look at this one first. Um, contract number on these reports is a required value, um, but there are other ways that you can get to a contract number. So um, like if I wanna search by my a contract owning organization, um, this is the one that I've been testing with mostly. So I wanna pull all of the award contracts for orthopedic surgery. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to get an all column values selection in here. So it's just these individual check boxes, but you don't have to go through and check all the boxes, right? That would take you forever. Just click the search button if you wanna see all of the contracts for that entire org and hit this move all button, just move them all over and that grabs all of them. Of course, if you're just looking for a single contract then you can put in that contract number. Um, you can also search by project, but I'll just give you a warning if there are multiple um, projects on an award, um, the summary data that's at the award level may not be accurate because you're only looking at that. Some data is at the award level and some data is at the, uh, coming from projects. Um, and so you might see some inaccuracies if you're just selecting by project number. If it's one-to-one, -one, one project, one award, um, then you, that's not going to be an issue usually runs pretty quick, so fingers crossed it does today too. It decides to be slow when we want to show it off further. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ruthie, why is it not running? Um, All right, there we go. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of different layouts here. This one that it defaults to has um, the contract level information and then right below it is project level information. So if you have um, multiple projects on an award, like this, well, this only one has data here, but if you have multiple projects on an award, you'll see all of those projects right together with that contract. Um, this budget amount is pulling from the award space. Um, same with this contract funding amount is also pulling from the award space. Um, Contract revenue, I'm still learning how this works on awards, but for um, cost, my understanding is, of course, correct me if I'm wrong, um, for cost reimbursable awards, this is basically based on um, expenditures is what creates revenue. Um, and then for non-cost reimbursable, it's based on invoicing. It's a little bit different from general contracts. Um, then there's an invoiced amount and a payment amount. And then expenditures that's based on the projects under that contract. And then there are three different balances here. So there's a budget balance that's the, the budget minus the expenditures, a financial balance that's the revenue minus the expenditures, and a cash balance that's the, CAD, the payments received minus the expenditures. Um, and so this kind of gives you some idea. Let's see, make this a little bigger. Um, so here's one, for example, where, um, you know, you're not over budget, the, the budget balance is zero, but we haven't actually received, received all of the payments, we haven't really even invoiced um, for all of that budget. And so based on cash or based on revenue, this is actually in deficit. Um, if you don't like this view and you're really like, I really just wanna see one row per contract, um, you can use this Excel format view. If you click this, it's gonna to download to Excel automatically. 
Um, and it's in the Excel format, it's just going to be one row per award with just this information not broken out by project. And then you can do your sorting, pivoting, um, you know, filtering, whatever you want to do on your Excel sheet. Um, these links go into this contract invoice and payment details report, which you can also run as a standalone, but you can get into it from either either one of these summaries. So if you want to see all of the invoicing and payments details, like all the all individual invoice numbers and the payments on those specific invoices, then you can click on that um, contract number link. Contract number for awards is the same as the award number, yes. Um, yeah, so then you can click that to get into that details and it will run it for that contract number. Any questions on this, this report, this view before I go on to the next one? Heather, can I ask a question? Yeah. So when you said we pull by award and it associates all the project numbers with that award. So you're mm -hmm. talking like if they assigned, if my award had, had cost share and I got a different project number, it would still show with this award number. Um, okay. So this is a good question because this is not including um, internal funding sources. Okay. Um, so this is only um, agency-based amount. So the external budget, external funding amount. Okay, thank so you. So I would it show that second project and show zeros, or would it not show the project? That I'm not sure about. If you had a cost share project, okay, but if I'll you had a a, a a an award that has multiple projects because you have you know, there's collaborators across departments and the other department has their own project, then you would see all of the projects on here. Or for those sub awards um, where there's no carry forward or where, where SPF is setting up a, basically a project for each budget year, you're gonna see all of those projects underneath here that are associated with that award. Thank you, okay. There is currently not a way to search by PI, Angie. That's um, number one <laughs> enhancement we didn't we didn't get to for this round. Okay, let me show you this one. This report is organized a little bit differently from the award summary um, because there can be typically with, this is not true hundred percent across the board. This is some of that data complexity typically, but typically with awards, you might have an award contract with multiple projects. You're not gonna typically have a project that one project that has multiple awards associated with it. General contracts tend to be the reverse, where you will have one project that has many contracts associated with it, um, but not typically a, con a given contract that has multiple projects associated with it. So the, the association here is flipped, where you're going to have the summary level is at the, the project level, and then you have contract level detail um, underneath that. Um, this, I'm going to show you how to search by contract owning organization. Of course, you can put in a project number, you can put in a contract number itself, but the searching by contract owning organization is uh, takes a couple of steps, one more step than I showed you on the last one. Um, because of that, we, we weren't able to get those all column values selections like you see here on the project number and contract number. Um, so I like looking at Qualcomm. Um, when you select your contract owning organization, it's going to filter the values for your, the project number. Um, 
it does not filter the values for the contract number. So it goes from contract owning org to project to contract. So if you select a project, it's going to filter the contracts. If you select an org, it's going to filter the projects. Does that follow? So it's going from here to here to here. Um, so I, I selected Qualcomm. Um, now, when I do this project number dropdown, I'm only going to get projects with contracts that belong to Qualcomm. I don't have an all column values, but I want all of them. So I'm going to click that search button and just move all of them over. And then contract number is also required, but it's the same thing. Um, there's no all column values. So I'm just going to hit that search button. Wait a second for them to load and then move them all over. Um, we're looking into with Oracle why that all column values selection isn't working. Maybe someday in the future we'll be able to get that on there. But right now, this is sort of the rigmarole that you have to go through to get all of the contracts, all of the projects and contracts for a contract owning org. I'll stop sharing while this is running um, in case that helps. Maybe you're all running this right now and that's why it's slow. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this has both general contracts and KR service agreements, so not awards. Um, in this top section, um, in this top section, this is summarized by project. So, for each project summarized with all of the contracts underneath that project, we have a budget amount for that project. The total contract amount is coming from um, the contract space. Revenue, revenue on the project is revenue uh, on all of the contracts under that project. Um, and that is based on events that have been posted against that, those contracts. Um, the invoiced amount on all of those contracts, the payment amounts on those invoices, um, and then expenditures on that project. And then you have those three balances again. So a budget balance, a financial balance, which is based on the revenue, and a cash balance that's based on the payment. So payments minus expenditures gives you that cash balance. Um, down below here is the detail by um, contract number. So you have the project number, the contract number, the customer name and account number. And then this is just that contract level information. It doesn't have that, but the balance information is just given by project um, since the expenditures are associated with the project, not with the contract. Um, we highlighted some things in red for you on here. So if you see a payment amount that's in red, that means that um, you have invoices that your customer hasn't paid yet. So that means the invoice, the payment amount is different from the invoice amount. If you see invoice amounts in red, that means, so this contract revenue, again, is based on events. The invoiced amount is based on invoices that have been, uh, what's the word, Marissa, accepted. So if you have draft invoices, those are not going to be captured in here. Um, if you see these amounts being different, that, that number is highlighted in red. And that means that you have recognized revenue on that contract that you have not submitted invoices for. So you need to take some action to go submit those invoices to bring the invoicing up to your revenue amount. Um, 
Okay, so again, you can click on project number here or contract number to get into that invoice and payment details. Let's find uh, one that might be a little bit interesting. Um, I don't know, let's try this. Oh, that, that didn't open a new tab. I want to find one that has, let's try one of these also. So this is running automatically for that contract and project that I selected. Um, on this invoice and payment details, this contract number is a required field, but you can also search by any of these other things. So if you want to see all of the invoices for your entire contract owning or you can do that. You could search by sponsor award number, um, financial unit where those things posted, fund where those things posted, um, customer information, invoice numbers. And if you're searching by like an entire financial unit or an entire contract owning org, that might be a lot of data. And you might want to just to make things run a little faster, you might want to search for this or use this accounting from and to date um, just to limit your, your search results. So that that will go, this, deter, is, this determines or is looking at um, the date that those invoices posted. So if you want to see only invoices for your entire financial unit that posted in the month of May, for example, or in 2022, then you can use that here. Um, here, though, we're just looking at a single contract. Um, this has some high-level information here, so about the contract, um, the financial unit associated with the contract, what kind of contract it is, um, customer information, um, contract and the line end date and the project and task that that contract line is associated with. Um, then you have all of this financial information. So this gives you all of the invoices that have been created against that project, or sorry, against that contract. Um, this is has the OFC invoice number on it. Um, yeah, thanks, Joey. Um, I'll come back to that. Um, it has the an invoice line number. So this is coming from the receivables module. This is coming from the uh, PPM contracts module. Um, the event for that contract that that invoice is associated with. Um, some of these have a Sparkum invoice number. If it's a credit, there aren't any on this one. If it's a credit of a previous invoice, this invoice amount will be negative. And in this column, you'll see which invoice um, was credited. So let's say just hypothetically, this 902.04 was um, a credit of this invoice, then you would see 78297 in this column. So it points you back to that um, OFC invoice number that was credited. Um, Real quick, sorry, just that Sparkum invoice number, um, it, it will display the Sparkum invoice number, or if it's not from Sparkum, it might just be another another data value that's populated in that field. Like, so for this example, these are actually not Sparkum invoice numbers. Yes, we need to figure out where that's coming from. <laughs> um, thanks, Marissa. Okay, then you for each of those invoices and events, you have an event amount, an invoice amount, and a payment amount, and then a balance due amount. So for these, you can see the, the event has been fully invoiced, um, and it's been fully paid, and the balance is zero. Um, down here, though, we have some invoices where the event has been invoiced, but has not been paid. So you can see, you know, you need to hunt down your customer for payment on those invoices. Um, yeah, I do see Isabella's question, Marissa. Do you want to just say what you said again? 
Sure. So the Sparkum invoice number will display there if if it does come from Sparkum, um, but not all of these contracts are billed through Sparkum. And so then in this case, it's pulling it's pulling from the, I think it's the event description field is what I think, uh, but it's not, in this case, this is not a Sparkum invoice number. Yeah, it's pulling from the description. So we have certain number of characters, which is the Sparkum. Uh, so whenever it is not Sparkum, it's just getting those all those characters until for that length. Uh, maybe in the enhancement later, uh, Marissa just later on, like she mentioned, maybe we can use a condition where it cannot display. Uh, that might be an enhancement, yep. Thanks, Maruti. Um, it should work for all contracts, but if you have an ex a specific example that you wanna look at, um, we can do that. Um, I pulled up this other example here um, because it, this one had um, on the summary, it showed, the event, the revenue amount and the invoice amount were different. Um, so on here, I'm looking for, hmm, we have something that is partially invoiced. Okay, so here it's because of this one. This is, was not the kind of example that I was looking for, but here we have a credited invoice. So you see that credited invoice number is this invoice is reversing this invoice, but that event amount is still um, 3933. So this event, event one, essentially has now not been invoiced because of this um, credit. Sometimes though, what you'll see, if you have a draft invoice or you have not created an invoice against the event, um, you'll see um, an invoice line distribution amount in here because that amount is pulling from PPM contracts. Um, so if there, there's a draft invoice in place, that this is pulling that draft invoice, but this OFC invoice number will be blank because that the invoice has not been submitted through PPM contracts to go into the receivables module to generate an OFC invoice. Um, and so if you see that where there's an invoice amount, but there's no OFC invoice number, that tells you you need to go into PPM contracts and do something about that invoice to get it submitted to, and to get an actual OFC invoice generated. Um, hello, um, can you explain the credit thing again? Because this is actually my account you're looking oh. at. Um, and so you're saying that the $3,933.34 that's in the OFC invoice payment amount, that actually didn't happen, you're saying, because there's a credit. So I'm confused. About yeah, that. yeah, I know. This was, this was confusing for me too, the first time I saw this. So if you have a credited invoice, this may not actually represent a payment. This may just represent the credit to that invoice, but in the math in the end is working out because you see this payment amount is negative. So these real, these two, you know, net to zero. So, so there's no actual receipt of cash. The payment is just the credit from the credit memo. So there is no column that shows actual payments received then is what you're saying. The cash received. Yeah, I mean, so this this total down here is going to reflect your actual cash received because this, well, this no. is not cash received and this is not cash received. Well, I mean, if, if the credit wasn't line wasn't there. If the credit line wasn't there, then this would be zero and you'd still have a balance due. Okay, so uh, who did the credit? I mean... So if nobody entered in the credit part, though, it would have Somebody. showed that it, it would have showed that it's already been paid and we, and we received payment, right? No, uh, the payment is coming from the credit memo. So if there's no credit memo, there's no payment. This is going to be zero, and you're going to show a balance due. But there's three entries for three thousand nine hundred thirty-three dollars. Why are there three entries there? So there's this in. You mean this one? Right, yeah, so like- These three right here. Yeah, there's three of them. Why are there three of them for the exact- So you had event up? event one was created for 3933. It was invoiced 
and then it was credited. Then event two was also created for 3933 and it was paid. Okay, so then what's the next line for? This one is the credit. See, this is invoice, or sorry, event one. This is also event one. So this is the credit of that invoice. But the event amount on here is still 3933. Okay, so with all so this- This is basically an uninvoiced event at this point. Or it's an event that's been invoiced and then credited, but the event amount is still there. So with all these lines, that the 39, 33, 34, the bottom line is that no payment was received, right? Is that? For that no. event, for the invoices on that event one, no, no payment was received, okay. but you have recognized revenue. Right, um, but the recognized revenue doesn't really mean anything if you don't actually receive payment kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah, but there, that's that's hitting your, like the GL is is going to show revenue that you have not actually invoiced for. So that's something that you might want to look into. Right. So is there going to be a report that actually shows like payments received at some point kind of thing, like a, like a simple report kind of thing? Because it seems like it's very difficult just to get that one number. Like in this particular instance, for this one particular invoice, there's like mm. three separate numbers, three separate line entries. And it seems like it shouldn't be that difficult, right? Or I could be missing something, so I'm not sure. Um, I mean, across these three lines, the total amount invoice is 39.33 and the total amount of the payment is 39.33. But there hasn't been any payment yet, you said. No, this one, this event was invoiced and paid. There's no credit associated with that for that event. You see how the, this one and this one are both event one, they cancel each other out. Then event two was created, invoiced and paid. There's nothing else with invoice two on here. Heather, this is Mike. Is is event one was an error mistake by some transactor? Is that probably what happened? Is that why it's here? I mean, I don't know the details behind this contract. It's not my contract. Gotcha. But that um, alludes to that, right? It was like put in there and then backed out. Right. That's essentially what you do anytime. There's two cases where you'll see that. And this is a pretty good example. You'll see that where um, you invoiced them, say, 4,500. And later you realize that you really needed to do them only 4,250. So you would, you create a credit memo and it's actually a credit memo event. You create a credit memo event, which will then, you can either call it back off or pay by credit that one you made. Okay, so now your 1,500 be gone. And then you're gonna create a new event for the new amount. And when that executes, you'll have your event amount. When you submit and get approved the um, invoice, you'll have your invoice amount. And um, what did you say that OFCP amount was reflecting, Heather? Was that a payment applied? Um, this, yeah, so it's going to reflect for credit memos that have been applied. It's the payment applied. So if mm -hmm, for the credit right. memos that have been applied, that's going to reflect the amount of the credit. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to show that effective payment applied to the credited invoice. Where, where is it pulling that information from? I mean, I know the credit just from the normal one, like, like the event two, where it, where it thinks it got it in, it made an event and it made an invoice. And then it says OFC invoice payment amount. Is that the amount that has been applied to that invoice? Yes. Right, Marie. And it's been applied from accounts receivable and it got yes. applied to the invoice and now yeah. it belongs. Okay. So James, that's one that thinks it's been paid. The other one actually has been paid. It just got paid funny. <laughs> Maybe you can click on uh, that yeah. number and see the receipt details. Yeah. The... yeah, so that's where I was going to go next. Thanks, Maruthi. So I just opened these two reports. Oh, what? Oh. Uh, I've been getting that to Heather, so. You've been getting it intermittently? 
Right. Yeah, it, like it just started happening about five minutes ago. Uh, like on anything that I, I. Our demo is dead if Oracle's down. So the next tab would have answered the questions. Uh, it yeah. gives you all the details for that payment amount. Right. Yeah, so the, this link here um, takes you to the, this receipt details report and gives you all of the receipt details for that invoice. Um, and for, sorry, for the payment on that invoice. So this one, what I would expect to see is nothing because there's been no actual receipt. There's, we haven't received like cash from the, the customer. Um, there's no receipt number associated with it. It got, the payment was applied through a different mechanism through the credit memo. And so when I click on this one, I'm guessing I would see, oh, it's up now. Exactly. So I clicked on this one and I see nothing because there's no receipt. But when I click on um, this one, let's see if this works. This is giving me the receipt information um, for that payment, the payment on that invoice. Um, so here I can see the receipt number, the receipt date, the receipt amount, any comments that were associated with the receipt, um, the invoice amount and the amount that was applied to that invoice is just what we see on that, that um, in, uh, invoicing and payment details report. Um, and then this also has um, the person who created a receipt and the receipt chart string. So here, even though this is one receipt, um, you can see that this is the same receipt number as a single receipt for, uh, to apply to pay that invoice. Um, there are actually two rows here and there are two rows because there are two chart strings. Often what we see, this is the chart string this is any chart string that is associated with that receipt in the general ledger. So often what we see is it might post to one chart string, get reversed, and then post to a different chart string. So here, the only difference between these ones is that one has um, a project, one has a project and the other one doesn't. I'm guessing it posted to the chart string with no project, was reversed, and then posted to the, the chart string with the project. Um, and this receipt applied amount and the receipt amount, that's the amount for the receipt and the, the amount of the receipt that was applied to that invoice, not necessarily the dollar amount from that's in the general ledger. Um, you can, if you wanna see details on this, you can take a second step, take that receipt number, search for this receipt number in the transaction details report, and then you'll get all of the GL transactions associated with that receipt, and you'll be able to see that kind of move, movement in and out. Um, okay, I'm gonna scroll back up in the chat. We had... Okay, for an LSA project 2013697. So I'm gonna go, is that, uh, Joey, is that a sponsored or non sponsored? Non sponsored. Okay. Sure, why is this not taking? I know it doesn't show up on um, on the awards module in the um, Oracle. So I'm not sure if it is sponsored or not. Let's try over here. Yeah, it's over here. Oh, 
this won't go the other way either like it goes from the contract number to project number mm, that makes it so that we can't search by is this going to run if i do this No. Nope. Um, Joey, do you have the award number or the contract number for it? Um, I do not. It, it was an old um, transition. It's not a sponsored award. It's not in the award space. Um, and it's not coming up associated with a contract. So I think that this may be a case where you have a project number, but there is no actual contract associated with it. So you would need to create that, that contract. Um, I do know that there is some LSA, um, I'll say reconversion work going on right now. So uh, this might be um, you know, related to that, that as well. But as of right now today, there is no contract associated with this project. I see, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so this, even though you can search by project number or by, a, uh, by the owning organization, it's only going to pull up projects um, that have contracts on them. Same on both of these. Um, Mike, do you have a clinical trial you want to look at? Um, uh, yeah, a coworker works on them. I'll grab one for you and put in the chat. Uh, Kristen, if we only have sponsored projects that are invoiced and handled by SPF, what's the use case with this new report for me as a departmental fund manager? Wella, do you want to speak to that? Wella's still here. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so if, if you want to just check out, you know, if you want to see what, what the status is on your invoicing, um, as you may know, we invoice a lot of these in Sparkum. And so there's that separate process. And then these invoices go to Oracle. And if you want to check out whether it's been paid or not, or if there's any outstanding payments that, that you know we got paid on, but it might not have been applied yet, this might be a useful report for you um, to reconcile that. I know some of you who manage uh, clinical trials uh, the sponsor initiated clinical trials, those are done by you in Sparkum, and sometimes there's some sort of delay in pushing that to Oracle. So this is also a useful report for you because you could see that the event's already in Oracle, but it might not have been um, accepted yet in Oracle as an invoice. And so that would be a, that would be also something that you could use this report for. Just really just reconciling your AR for your sponsored project. And I would think it'd be most useful for um, like milestone type awards that we have to invoice for, right? Rather than like an NSF award. Right, right. And NSF is invoiced directly in, in Oracle. Um, and then the, the non-letter of credit awards are invoiced in Sparkum. So not just the milestone um, it's also useful for your flow throughs for any of your private grants. Um, so that this report will also cover that. One thing I forgot to mention when we were here before, you see that this, um, this report groups these things so that this data is not repeating for every line. Um, that makes it so, you know, this contract line amount is for the contract line. It's not, you know, that amount for every invoice. Um, and then it has these nested tables because sometimes there can be more than one event that's invoiced on a single in invoice. Um, if you don't like that view and you want one row per everything, you know, not this grouping, you know, you want those rows to be repeating and, and, you know, manipulable in Excel. There is this Excel tab here. And again, clicking that will automatically download to Excel. 
You just need to be careful though, um, because in cases where, let's say there's a payment amount um, that is, was sorry, so let's say that we have an invoice that is covering multiple events, that payment amount is for the invoice, it's not by event. So if you have those multiple lines, you're gonna see that payment amount repeating for each event line. Um, and so you just wanna be, be careful when you're looking at that Excel file that you're not adding things up inappropriately. Um, so Mike, here's your clinical trial. Um, there's all five events with the Sparkum invoice numbers, with the corresponding OFC invoice numbers when those invoices were created and the dollar amounts and you have nothing unpaid. Thank you. Okay, does, um, just a big picture, what does this report provide that maybe any other report did not? Other, it, does it just uh, much more easier to get to for a contract? Um, for example, like the SPF uh, reporting that has revenue and invoices, is this uh, more robust in some ways? I just wanted to understand my um, Yeah, this has chart string information on it, which that one doesn't have. Um, this, um, you know, gets you to the receipt details, which that doesn't have. And really bringing together the PPM contract information with the receivables information, as well as, you know, on these summaries showing you those balances, um, like your cash balance based on your payments received or, or your balance based on the revenue that you've generated, rather than just, you know, looking at a, a PPM budget balance report that's lo just looking at your balance relative to budget. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, that billing summary report, it's, it's um, this one is, if you want to get technical, this is a BI publisher report. The billing summary report is um, built in OTBI, and um, there's some, some specific circumstances that are not working well with that report that we can't fix because of the way that it was built. And so those issues are all resolved on this report. Christine, assuming this work, this will work with PO for services uh, has been done in Kowali. We've been unsuccessful in putting this in the system. Uh, Marissa or Wella, can you address that? I don't follow what that means. What was the question again? It's Christine's question in the chat. Do you see it? Oh, Actually, um, Marissa, this is Christine. We have quite a few um, PO for services, which are really complicated. And um, we're, we're trying to find checks right now at the fiscal year end, because what's happening is that the, in, um, the vendor is sending the checks on campus. So we're trying to find, so what we need to do is get it into the system so the checks don't get lost. So we're looking at like maybe a hundred some thousand dollars that's floating around campus. So we need to get our our appeal for services in this system. So I'm assuming this is going to work now, right? If I mean, if, 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 you, if you have your, your POs set up as, as contracts, right? Either, if, you know, a care service agreement or general contract, then yes, this report would, would apply to you. Um, you know, obviously if the money is not received, then it's not gonna show up on a, on a report and, um, so if you're looking for like unapplied payments, right, yeah. there's a separate report, a separate report for that. Right. So what the, um, so I'll try it again for this fiscal year because it was a fiasco last fiscal year. And um, I'll watch this recording and see um, if we can do it the right way, because um, it's become a headache trying to find these reports, these um, payments, because it's not put, it's put in Kowali, but um, Janet had helped us out in the beginning trying to find payments and we're still trying to find payments from that 
um, creating a contract, an event, and invoicing. It's, it didn't work for us. Okay, so I, a, a couple of suggestions might be to you know, go ahead and put your contract numbers in this report, see if it gives you the data you're looking for. But if those payments have not been applied, then I would suggest using the unapplied uh, receipts report. Um, and then if you're having problems in terms of setting up your contract or um, using the unapplied uh, receipts report, we do have the um, uh, FinOps office hours on a monthly basis. Okay. Um, or you could submit a ticket and we could, you know, help you from there. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm looking at Jillian's question. She asked why on contract 87001 um, has three lines for 211.13. So you see them right here. Um, and they are all on different chart strings. So what is going on there? Um, so to look at that, I, I'm going to copy this receipt number and plug it into... Um, the transaction details report here. Um, while that's running, I can answer Sandra's question. I'll just repeat what I said at the beginning in case folks missed it. Um, if there are things on this report that you think are missing, um, not in terms of data, but in terms of uh, information or searchability, like it, you're like, this would be really great if only I could search by my PI's name, or this would be really great if only it had the award name or you know what, whatever that additional information might be. Um, I'm gonna ask you to submit enhancement requests so if you go to services and support under budget and finance, go to help. Um, there's this enhancement request ticket here. So you can um, submit an enhancement request, specify which report you're looking at that you're asking to, to enhance. So, you know, there's four new reports on here. If you just say the contract management dashboard, I'm not gonna know what you're referring to. So refer to the specific report, give a screenshot so I can see what you're talking about. If you find data issues, um, please don't write off the report and say, this sucks, I'm never gonna use it. Submit a ticket and let us know that you found some data issues. Um, and so if you go in here, you can say, um, report a problem. Um, or BI and financial reporting and report an issue or error with an existing financial report. We'll get on that right away and fix whatever issue you've identified. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And if you have additional questions about reports, um, you can also, you know, you're not reporting a problem, but you can ask a question um, and use um, the same thing, this other inquiries, but that comes into my queue as well. Um, if you want one-on-one -on -one time while that's still running, um, You go to BI and financial reporting here on blank under budget and finance. Um, under get started, there's some basic information and under this, is there training or support available? Um, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, and that I, I free up a couple of hours a week um, for these one-on-one -on -one sessions. There are 15 minute blocks that you can sign up for, but if you have you know, a question that you think is gonna take more than 15 minutes and there's back-to-back -back sessions available, you can sign up for more than one. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing so that this can run.
Okay, there are a lot of transactions associated with this receipt. Um, oh, wait, some of these are cash. They should have excluded. Okay, so the receivables are. This is a little bit hard to look at. I would probably download this to Excel so to just try to follow um, where the ins and the outs are on this. Um, and actually, we should have run this just for this accounts receivable account code. They're all on that, right? Yeah, so then we wouldn't be getting all of these um, cash account um, transactions. And I'm just confused because the receipt was for $211.13, but- Oh, and this is 844.52. Yeah. Did I copy wow. the wrong one? No. Hmm. I'm confused too, Jillian. I don't think we can her, answer this in the next two minutes, but I'm going to look into this. Interestingly enough, her amount multiplied by four equals the amount you're seeing there. Huh. Mm. Okay. I'd just like to say that I have um, encountered data issues today in Oracle yeah. and several different reports I've run yeah. um, similar to this. So uh, be it's careful. Quadrupling. Tripling, yeah, there was, an, there was an issue this morning, but it was resolved around 9 a.m. So I'm hoping this this one isn't that same issue, but I'm, I'm, I'll submit a ticket and we'll look into it. Okay, so if you have more questions, you can submit a ticket, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time, or we have fund management office hours every week. You can bring your questions back to a future fund management office hours. Um, thanks everyone. Thanks Marissa and Wella and Ruthie for helping out. Thank you.